Now, first on the Western Slope, you're watching KREX 5 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for choosing KREX 5 News at Noon. I'm Claude Bordelon. President Donald Trump officially declared a national emergency at the U.S.-Mexico border. Unhappy with the funding Congress is providing him for barriers at the southern border, President Trump says he will sign the bill to fund the government and declare a national emergency to free up more money to build his wall. So I'm going to be signing a national emergency. And it's been signed many times before. It's been signed by other presidents from 19... 77 or so, it gave the presidents the power. There's rarely been a problem. They sign it. Nobody cares. I guess they weren't very exciting. But nobody cares. They sign it for far less important things in some cases, in many cases. We're talking about an invasion of our country with drugs, with human traffickers, with all types of criminals and gangs. The president's decision to declare a national emergency is already facing criticism from some Republicans and potential lawsuits. It's now been one year since the Stoneman Douglas shooting in Parkland, Florida. Although that tragedy happened more than 2,000 miles away, it still impacts high schools, families, and law enforcement across the nation. So KREX 5 News spoke with a local school resource officer and Colorado native who says multiple school shootings led to his current career, where he wants to make sure tragedies like these don't happen again. The six-year veteran of the Grand Junction Police Department remembers the shootings at Columbine High School nearly 20 years ago. I attended the funeral of one of those students, um, you know, a week and a half later. I didn't know them. I, had, I didn't know anybody that went to school there. I've never been there. And I don't know really, even at the time, what compelled me to go, but I felt that I needed to. It was something that I'll never forget. Now a school resource officer at Grand Junction High School, Officer Litsu spends his days with nearly 2,000 Grand Valley students. Thanks to money from a statewide initiative, District 51 will be improving and updating security features inside our schools. District 51 was chosen as part of the School Security Disbursement Program and will receive over $300,000. With the funding, the district plans to replace over 200 security cameras while adding 50 new cameras. They'll also add security entrances to East and West Middle Schools as well as security office at Palisade High School. All of these upgrades are part of a mission to make students feel comfortable and safe while learning. These are um, things that, that should make students feel more comfortable, students and staff feel more comfortable, more safe in school, which ultimately the goal would be to create that safe learning environment. The district still wants to add new security measures at Fruita Monument, Central, and Grand Junction High Schools. They say this grant will be able to cover the long-term issues so they can start looking into new projects. A lawsuit has just been filed over a controversial natural gas plan in Battle Mount Mesa. That's where the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission recently decided to permit URSA's Pad A. According to the Western Colorado Alliance, Pad A includes over 20 new natural gas wells and a wastewater injection well site. Those against Pad A say it's too close to the river and nearby homes. The battlement concerned citizens and the Grand Valley Citizens Alliance filed a suit against the commission with a Denver district re court requesting the court take action. 2019 might have just started, but the city is gearing up for its next decade. During city manager Greg Caton's coffee with the public, he brought up the city's 10-year plan expiring in 2020. This is a broad, comprehensive plan that can cover everything from land use to our local culture. The city is looking for public input on the Grand Junction you want to see in 2030. The key to seeing the city you want for the next 10 years is engaging with the city and letting your voice be heard. It's really a project of the people, if you will. It's a comp plan for the city. It's not something that me or my staff as the director of our community development department make up. We really look to our community and our citizens to provide information to us. If you live in Grand Junction, you can expect open forums and additional ways to interact with the city about the plan online in the coming weeks. 
53 years ago, Strive started providing their services to the Grand Valley, and they got to celebrate with their opening of the new building. A ribbon-cutting ceremony was held because now the new 30,000-square-foot, two-story building is finished. It's off of Wellington by St. Mary's Medical Center and provides many upgrades and features to the old facility from Grand Avenue. The new building has several observation rooms, handicap accessible bathrooms, and more room for those receiving care and the staff. This puts us in a building that we're going to have, you know, another 60, 70 years in without fail. So that, and, and our folks deserve that. The new building also has access to high-speed internet and is closer to many bus stops. Cases of measles are being reported across the United States, with Colorado seeing its first case in January. The biggest part of keeping measles outbreaks low is to have at least 93% of the population immunized. According to Mesa County Public Health, 1 in 10 District 51 students are not protected against measles, mumps, or rubella. That puts the vaccinated population three points below the safe level to prevent outbreaks. Are certain, there's a certain percentage of students who are immunocompromised or get chemotherapy or something that, so medically they cannot get the immunization. The more students we have, when we have pockets of unvaccinated people, it can really quickly spread through that unprotected population. These unprotected parts of the population can only be kept safe by those who can get vaccinated doing so. Some of you may be getting ready for your long weekend, but just know that means several places will be closed on Monday. City offices will be closed, but trash and recycling will be on their normal schedule. Plus, make sure you head downtown and take advantage of that free parking. Many Mesa County offices will also be closed, except for Animal Services, Grand Valley Transit, the Landfill, the Sheriff's Office Emergency Services, and the Criminal Justice Services. Also, the Mesa County Libraries will have the day off. All month long, KREX 5 News is diving into the history of the Grand Valley. Today, we're talking about the legacy left behind by one Grand Junction City Councilman and how it's impacted our community. All that in just a few seconds.